Almost six months after abdicating, Edward would finally marry Wallace, the woman he had given up the throne for, who would become the Duchess of Windsor, and invited his brothers and sister to attend. But there was a family ban on the former king's big day. This was particularly hard on George, the youngest brother of the pack. He had had a very, very strong bond with Edward. He had had this extremely troubled youth involved with women and men and drugs and the lot. And Edward had helped him to emerge from that. George was torn because he knew that he'd be letting his brother down if he didn't fulfill that promise. I'm sure Edward was deeply embittered by this experience. It was more than a snub, it was an announcement that what he had hoped would be the fulfillment of his happiness was actually going to involve him in being uh, an exile. In the autumn following Edward's wedding, there was a sighting of him in Paris by a friend of the family. So we've got a letter from Mary to her mother. My darling mama, Portia told me she had seen him in Paris and he looked well and seemed happy. He evidently was pleased to get your letter as he mentioned it. I wrote to him a fortnight ago, but have had no answer. And the former king was about to step back into the public realm. Edward decides it's time to relaunch himself as a major public personality. He's not just going to retreat into being a playboy on the Riviera. No, he is a big figure, and he wants to be recognized as a big figure. So where's he going to go? Not back to England, obviously. Nazi Germany. The Duke and Duchess of Windsor visit Germany. There's a big crowd at the station to catch a glimpse of His Royal Highness and the Duchess on their arrival from Paris. Hiles echo in their ears as they drive away to their hotel. In October 1937, Edward chose Nazi Germany as the place to relaunch himself as a public figure. But he said this visit was to him a complete bombshell. Edward spent 12 days in Germany, touring workers' housing, a munitions factory, and traveling on Hitler's personal train. The trip was paid for by the Nazis. Edward had often weighed indiscreetly into politics, in contrast to his father, who had styled himself as the epitome of royal neutrality. Now Edward was off the leash. <laughs> 